Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's presentation, which is the review of the most common technical analysis techniques. My name is Gail Mercer, and I will be your hostess for this afternoon. Now, before we get started, I would like everyone to take a moment and read over the Nadex risk disclaimer. Basically, any type of trading you do, whether it's binary options, spreads, futures, or forex, will involve risk. Even binary options with a limited risk environment also has a risk factor. Never trade with money you cannot afford to lose. Now, my name again is Gail Mercer, and I'll be your hostess for the presentation. I do have over 15 years of trading experience. I started out with a company that programmed the indicators and just simply fell in love with the price bar. I do specialize in price action, volume analysis, and divergence because I believe they are leading indicators. I'm also a frequent contributor to Stocks and Commodities, Traders World, and Top Shelf. I've also been a speaker at Traders Expo, Traders World Online Expo, and the Wyckoff Volume Conference. I'm also the author of Trading Nadex Binary Options and Spreads Using Candlestick Patterns, Trading Nadex Binary Options Using Currencies, Trading Nadex Binary Options, Keeping It Simple Strategies, and The New Trader's Guide to Trading Nadex Binary Options in Spreads. Now today, what we're going to be talking about is just typical technical analysis tools that are usually available in any platform, okay? Most technical analysis tools look at past data and then they simply plot the result in a graph graphical format. Most of the technical analysis indicators are based on the close of the price bar, but it can be based on anything, um, any data point of the price bar. For example, the open, the high, the low, the close. And I have seen moving averages that were plotted on the highs or on the lows. So it, Typically, it is the close that is used, but any point from that price bar can also be used. It also includes patterns. For example, double tops, double bottoms, head and shoulders, triangles, pennants. All of that is considered a technical analysis technique. Now, we're going to start with a moving average. It's one of the most commonly used indicators on a chart. And there's um, basically four types of moving averages. You've got a simple moving average, which is the black dot on the screen. And that's simply an average of price points divided by a period of time. For example, you might have the close divided by a 20 period moving average. So you would have the close and then it would be divided by 20, okay? You have exponential moving average. That's the blue line on the chart. It is a weighted moving average, but the rate of decrease from one point to the next is not consistent, okay? Then you have a weighted moving average, which gives more weight to the most current data. So the closer to the end of that average, they use, they give more weight to that particular close. For example, the last bar versus 20 bars ago. And then you have the whole moving average, which is a very fast moving average and it eliminates lag. However, it can also be somewhat choppy because it moves a lot faster with price. And that is the red line that you see on the chart. Now, you can also add multiple moving averages to identify entry points. So, for example, here you have three moving averages, and you could say, okay, anytime price pulls back to the moving average and the candlestick, you know, closes in my direction, I would have an entry. Just an example of how you could actually combine the moving averages to identify an entry. Now, one of the issues with moving averages is a sideways market, because when you get into a sideways market and price pulls back to the moving average, 
um, then you have an entry and then the moving average decides to turn around. Well, you know, a lot of times, and you can see it right here in the center of the chart, it's not really going anywhere, okay? And this is where it gets into trouble when you're trying to use it because you can see the moving average right here is kind of flatlining. So if you're entering and then exiting and entering and exiting, entering and exiting, it can cause losses, okay? Now the whole moving average does not lag, but it changes really fast. Well, because it changes so fast, you can get a lot of false signals, okay? So there's really kind of a fine art between having a lag and not having a lag, okay? And usually we do that by smoothing an indicator. We take the lag out of it. There is another way, which I'll tell you in a little bit on how to take a lag out as well. Now on the stochastics, Stochastics measures momentum, okay? And what it does is it compares the closing price to the range of the price over a period of time. It can also be smoothed. The overbought level is normally considered 80. The oversold level is normally considered at 20. And it can also be used for cycles, okay? In other words, it identifies the rhythm that the market is in. And some people actually will trade just the cycles, okay? Now, this is an example of a stochastics, okay? It can also lag and it can also remain overextended for a period of time. Normally, that will indicate a very strong trend. And whenever it's indicating that strong trend, then you know, okay, just enter at the pullbacks, okay? Now the RSI is also a momentum indicator and it compares the speed in the change of price. Now with the RSI, typically overbought is at 70, oversold is at 30. Now, as you can see, this is the RSI and it, it looks really choppy if you're trying to trade all of these little lines in here. But most people will use this as, okay, over 70, then you have an overbought market, below 20, you have an oversold market. And the RSI and the stochastics were both developed by the same person, so they are very similar. You also have Bollinger Bands, and the Bollinger Bands simply plot the standard deviation from the moving average. The moving average would be the center line. It identifies the sideways markets because the bands contract, and it also identifies the volatile periods because the bands expand. Now, this is an example of the Bollinger Bands and you have this upper line. So when you look at this, this is two standard deviations from the moving average. The lower band is two standard deviations from the moving average. Okay, so you have a negative two and a positive two basically. And anytime you see that the bands are contracting like they are here, then you know, okay, this is potentially a sideways market, and then when they start to expand like they did here, then you know, okay, now you're going into a volatile period. This kind of helps eliminate some of the sideways chop that we get, and that's something that, you know, kind of all traders face at one time or another. Another popular technical analysis indicator is the MACD, okay? It's considered a trend following indicator. It is a momentum indicator and it simply subtracts the slow moving average from a fast moving average. And it does use the exponential moving average. So in this case, the MACD is down here and you can see that when the market is going down, the MACD is plotting red because the 
moving averages are going down. And this is actually the difference between the two moving averages that it's plotting. And then you go up, then you have a downwards period, another upward period, and then it goes down again. Okay, you can actually read divergence also on the MACD. Um, and all you do is you would say, okay, it's come back to test this top, it went lower, there's your divergence, okay? So the MACD can be very useful if you know how to read divergences or you just want to trend follow. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you about the whipsaws on the MACD, you do have whipsaws. In other words, when your moving average is going sideways, you can see that the MACD may get you in and then it's going to reverse on you. That's gonna be a whipsaw or a range bound market. Now the floor trader pivot lines, you identify basically the support and resistance and it's based on the prior day's action, okay? Uh, what's the name of the two-tone MACD? That looks helpful. Liz, it's a MACD. Um, if you have trading view, it's their MACD. And um, some MACDs, you know, both of the histograms will be one color, which is probably what you have seen in the past, Liz. Um, and it's got a zero line on it, okay? So anything below would be considered a downtrend. Anything above would be considered an uptrend. I like the ones that are colored because it's just more easily identifiable. Now on the floor trader pivot lines, um, typically the floor trader pivot lines, you have a pivot line then you have um, what's considered S1, S2, S3, and then you would also have R1, R2, R3. S simply stands for support, R stands for resistance. Some of the pivot lines will actually plot, you know, seven different lines. Typically what is used would be uh, three lines. So you would have S1, S2, S3, R1, R2, R3. So in this example, you can see the red line is the pivot line, and then you have R1, R2 above, S1, S2 below, okay? Now, typically the pivot line is used as a kind of a guidance for where the market may go for that day. If it is trading above the pivot line, then you know it's gonna be an up day. If it's trading below the pivot line, it's going to be a down day. Okay, it also identifies the next area where price may find support or resistance. Again, it's based on the prior day's action. Now, there are multiple ways now of calculating the pivot. The standard calculation would be the high, low, and close divided by three of the prior day. People are now also using the open, high, low, and close close divided by four, okay? It doesn't matter, you're not gonna see that much difference in the pivot lines, as long as you're using the data points from the prior day. Now you also have what is known as a head and shoulders formation. Now head and shoulders formation, you have a large peak in the center with smaller peaks on both sides. Now you draw a neckline from one point to the next point, and this is where you're anticipating if price breaks through this area, it should go the distance from, you take, this is the head right here, so you measure the different, the distance between these two points, and that's what the anticipation is of where price should go. You also have what's called an inverted head and shoulders. And again, you have a low here, a lower low here, higher low here. This is the head. This is considered the shoulder. This is considered the shoulder. 
you draw your line there and again the distance between the head and this point is where anticipation is that price will go okay I don't use the head and shoulders very much. I get so caught up in trying to identify the shoulders in the head that I forget I'm supposed to trade. So it's just me. Now you can see this is a very small head and shoulders here. This being the head. Right here is your head. Here's your shoulder. Here's your shoulder. Okay. You measure the difference from the top here at 13, 113.39 down to the neckline, which is 113.28. Okay, so your anticipated movement would be at 113.15. And it actually exceeded that by just a little bit. Okay, now this is a regular head and shoulder formation. An inverted head and shoulder you just anticipate the market to go up, okay? Now, you also have what's called double tops and double bottoms. I do actually trade these a lot. And all it is, is you have a high price returns to that high, or if you're looking at lows, it returns to the low. It can actually be two bars or it could be multiple bars. The bigger the distance is between them, usually the bigger the move is. Um, if you're looking for a double top, you expect price to move down. If you're looking at a double bottom, you expect price to move up. In here, you see this is a two bar double top, okay? That's all it is. You've got two bars that formed a double top. You had a reversal bar. Okay, it should go down. It went down, formed a double bottom, and then it went back up and formed a lower high. Okay, price came back to test that high over here, and it failed to break through it, formed a bearish bar here, and then it went down. On the flip side, you had a double bottom right here. It came back to test this low, formed a bullish bar, went up to test the high. Really, you know, this is what the market does all day long. It moves in these formations, okay? So if you're testing the high and you see the bearish bar develop, then expect it to move down. If it tests a low and forms a bullish bar, expect it to move up. These are pretty easy patterns to actually trade. Now, you also have divergence, and I love divergence, okay? Um, there's basically four types of divergence. You have bullish divergence, and that's simply higher highs in price, lower highs in the oscillator, okay? What is an oscillator? Does everybody know what is an oscillator is? If you don't know, just type it up, and I'll answer it real quick. Okay, an oscillator is stochastics, RSIs, MACD. All of those are considered oscillators, okay? Um, so, for example, I use the stochastics. So, for me, it would be lower highs in the stochastics, okay? That's an oscillator. It oscillates around given values, okay? Um, bearish divergence would be lower lows in price, higher lows in the oscillator and see this is where a lot of people get confused is um actually on the hidden divergence right here because now if i draw the bullish let's go back to number one if i draw the bullish one and i'm going to change my pen color so it's a little bit brighter okay you have higher highs in price but you have lower highs in the oscillator okay Notice the direction that these are going in. Price is going one direction, the oscillator is going in another direction. With bearish divergence, you have lower lows, but higher lows in the stochastics. 
again, you, do you see how it's almost kind of like a sideways V? Hidden divergence is actually the opposite of this. So you have lower highs, but higher highs in the stochastics. Hidden bearish divergence means that you have higher lows, but lower lows in the stochastics. Does everybody understand that? And this is why when I teach clients to read divergence, I actually make them um, draw these lines, okay? All right, this is your bullish divergence, and I'm just going to put B div, okay? Your hidden bullish divergence is the opposite. Do you see that, Sam? So this is your bullish hidden divergence. I don't have a chart up, Tamara. All right, if you have bearish divergence, this is your bearish divergence. You have a low here, you have a low here. You have a low here, you have a low here. So this is your bearish divergence, but your bearish hidden divergence would be higher lows with lower lows in the stochastics. Do you understand that now, Sam? They're actually going in totally opposite directions. And if you start drawing the lines on them, then you will see them. But without those lines, it'll be very hard to see. Now I'll put a chart up and you can actually see it. Here, at the uh, very first one, you have a high here. This is your next high. And then in the stochastics, you have a high here and you have a high here. So which type of divergence is that? This is the bearish divergence. Okay. Then you have a low here and you have a low here. It actually went a couple of ticks lower, but you have a low here and a low here. What is that? This will be your bullish divergence. Okay, here you have a low followed by a low here. You have the low here followed by a low here. Which divergence is that? That's bullish hidden divergence. Now, basically, it's still the same concept. Price is doing one thing, oscillator is doing another, okay? Both of them are momentum moves, okay? For some reason, this one, which is the uh, hidden divergence, is harder for traders to recognize. And if we go on to the next one, here you have a high followed by a high over here that is higher, okay, and yet price is making lower highs. What is the outcome? Price goes lower. Does everybody understand that? Yes, it is being recorded, Sam. I 
I think this is probably one of the hardest techniques to recognize, um, whether you're using the stochastics or you're using the MACD. It, they're both still very hard until you practice a lot. And really, most of technical analysis is about practicing. Yeah, RSI will do the same thing. You can spot divergences with the RSI too. Same thing. The only thing with the RSI, Sam, is that, you know, it's a lot more, um, the lines are real whippy unless you're using a smooth RSI. So do you buy or sell and when do you do it? Um, that's a great question, Ronald. Um, I guess it depends on your strategy for entry. Now, remember last week I talked to the candlesticks? What was one of the first things I told you in the presentation today? That most indicators use what? The close of the price bar, right? So what is gonna cause for example, the stochastics to turn down. Okay, if it's measuring the close and the close is up, 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 and then the close comes down, what's going to happen on the stochastics? It's going to peak. That's just about any indicator. Okay, so my entry off of divergence would be short the market here, go long here go short here, um, even go long here, okay? Because when you have bearish divergence, okay, the market's going to come down, okay? That's what the market did. When you have bullish divergence, it tells you that the market's going to go up, okay? Hidden divergence is usually faster and more powerful to me for some reason, then, you know, just your standard bullish and bearish divergence. It's got that extra push to it, okay? So I'm a big hidden divergence trader. I'm looking for it all the time, okay? But, you know, again, if you just add on what I taught you with the candlesticks, okay, that's going to turn any lagging indicator into a leading indicator. Does everybody understand that? And that's the reason my passion is price bars with leading indicators. It's the price bar that makes it a leading indicator. And it took me years to figure that out in trading. Okay. Um, <laughs> What's your thoughts on the Ikimoku cloud? Well, as you can see, I can't even pronounce it. So if I can't pronounce it, I'm not using it. You know, I, I don't have any thoughts on it at all, Scott. I think any indicator, if you study it and you believe in it, it will work for you. That's my whole thought on indicators in general. There's nothing magical about any indicator. What is magical is the way that you're using it, the way that you understand it. And we're going to get in that on the uh, October 31st, because next week, the webinar that I'm doing is how to choose a market in time frame that is right for you as a trader, okay? And then on the 31st for members who have funded an account with Nadex, I'm doing a webinar, applying your knowledge, designing your strategies for Forex in futures. That's the one that all of you really want to be at, okay? That's the one that I'm really going to go in depth on, you know, okay, you have this indicator, you understand it. Okay, how do you put it into a strategy and back test it to before you go live, okay? And, you know, I get asked a lot, uh, what's the best indicator? There are no best indicators, okay? 
what's best is knowing and understanding what you're using. That webinar is going to be October 31st, Sam. But again, to qualify for that webinar, you have to fund your account. It only takes $250 to fund your account, okay? And that's the one that you want to be at. And they'll uh, send out the links. If you have funded your account, they will send the link to you to register for that webinar. It's on Halloween. Easy. Great, Sam. It really is the one you want to be at. Because that's the one that I'm going to take the price bars and the indicators and this, you know, the mentality. We're going to put it all together, okay? It's going to be about a two-hour webinar, guys, but it's going to be well worth your effort to be there. Liz, I would definitely make sure you have your account funded by them. And they're setting it up where you can review all three videos. And I do suggest go back through the previous three videos, okay? <laughs> That's pips for candy. I like that. <laughs> um, we're going to take everything from the last three videos and we're going to package it so you know, okay, I want to be a trader. This is what I got to do to be that trader I want to be. They're going to send you out, Tamara, a link to register for that webinar. And it will only be sent to members that have funded their accounts. And, you know, one of the reasons, these are like the building blocks that I've been doing. Last week, I did the candlesticks, okay? This week, I'm going over basic technical analysis. Next week, we're going to go through markets and we're going to go through time frames. OK, then we're going to put it all together at that one webinar. It's going to be, I think it's going to be awesome. But, you know, I'm partial. <laughs> oh, great, Jonathan. I'm glad you're already signed up. And, you know, this is where, OK, we're going to say, OK, this is our divergence. And, you know, if you go and review the videos over the weekend before Halloween, that's even going to benefit you more. Okay. You will still qualify as long as you have funded your account. Liz, I really in, in, do encourage traders to go back and review the videos. You know, at one time I was giving out cheat sheets for the price bars. And um, I realized it wasn't helping people to give them a cheat sheet. But if I tell you to draw the candlestick patterns out, wow, then you're really learning. You know, because now you're, imp you know, you're impressing it on your brain. You're having to think it through. That's what makes a difference. How do you review the videos? They're on YouTube. Kasim, and I know when they send out the link for the webinar on October 31st, they're going to also include the links from the three premium, uh, previous videos. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I really do enjoy teaching y'all. I enjoy teaching in general. So, and also the today's webinar, they will send it out in an email so you can uh, rewatch it as well. And remember, you know, out of all of the presentation today, what should you remember above all else? It is the close of the price bar that will change that indicator. Okay, and that's on most indicators. Now, if it's a custom indicator, that could be different. <laughs> okay, now, um, let's see. Yeah, I, I got totally off topic here. 
Okay, let me give you my contact information. It is uh, www.tradershelpdesk.com. And of course, my email is gm at tradershelpdesk.com. Okay, so if anybody has any questions even after the presentation, um, you can always, you know, send me an email. Now, um, if you go also, for those of you that have missed some of my other presentations, if you go to youtube.com and type in Nadex in Gail Mercer, it will come up. Uh, the link for the previous email was sent out October 11th. So if you go back to your emails on October 11th, you should find the link there. And if you can't find the link, send me an email. I can find it. I'm a search guru. Any other questions today, guys? I do want to thank you all for joining me today. I'm glad you joined and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Oh, thank you. Yeah, just making me blessed today. Well, I hope everybody has a wonderful week. I do hope you review the video and I also hope that you sign up for next week's webinar on the 24th. It is at noon also, okay? And it's how to choose a market in time frame that is right for you.